Welcome to Hosting the Supernatural. This is Nikki van Avestazen. It's been an incredible week. We just love spending time with you. Thank you for joining us on all the social media platforms. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for all our partners. We really love you, appreciate you. And, and for the, all the viewers out there, thank you for spreading the, the, the gospel. Thank you for helping us reach the lost and introducing people to the glory and the supernatural presence of God. I want to take you into one of our services for today and tomorrow, and you will just be thoroughly blessed by the Word of God being preached at New Beginnings Christian Family Church in Johannesburg. Thank you for being a part of this. I love you. Remember, I pray for you every single day that your prayers will be answered and that whatever you believe will happen in Jesus name. Thank you for also purchasing our book, Hosting the Supernatural. This is your moment to host the supernatural in your life. So let's go into the word of the Lord and uh, let's enjoy a wonderful time with believers around the word of the Lord at NBCFC Johannesburg. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus and we ask that tonight that every hindering spirit, every spirit that is not of God will now leave that your presence will fill this house, every heart, every mind, every soul, every person. May the glory of God rest upon this word very strongly. Help me to preach, help me to teach, help me to move in the dimension of the supernatural. When we lay our hands upon these people tonight, I pray, O oh God, that there will be impartation taking place. That their lives will truly be changed and touched by the presence of the Almighty God. What you did for me, do it for them, is our prayer in Jesus' name. We thank you for this move of the Holy Ghost that is coming to our nation, coming to our lives. We are very careful not to take any glory for ourselves. All glory belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Tell the person next to you, I'm ready to receive the word. And then you may take your seats. Thank you. God bless you. <clears throat> I want to speak to you on the end time cycles of God. And then I'm going to move into a, a short portion of where I want to really preach to you on the glory of God. And then we're going to release the presence of God in this place. I want you to be expectant in the next 30 minutes that the glory of God any time can hit the place. All right. I am going to preach and teach until I feel here's the wave. And then we're just going to go for this, all right? So the Word of God is important because it builds the atmosphere. Preaching is for uh, encouraging. Teaching is for edifying. So I want to edify you. I want to encourage you as well. We're getting ready for a move of the Holy Spirit that's going to hit our, world, our nation in a very strong way. So any moment in the service, the fear of God is going to come. The glory of God is going to come. The presence of God is going to hit this place. And I want you to react towards that, all right? I have to teach you how to react towards the presence of God. So what is the end time cycles? What is this end time move of God? What's going to take place? I want you to write down a couple of things. What is the order of this end time cycle? There is a cycle. It's going to come. And there is an order to this. There's an order to the cycle. Thanks, son. So there's an order to this, and I want you to, to flow with me on this, and I'm going to show you the 10 things that's going to take place. It's an order, like a cycle, and you can see where we are in the cycle. The first manifestation of the cycle is the fullness of character and the maturity of the bride. The fullness of character, it's on the screens there, it's the fullness of character and maturity of the bride. Now, I don't know who, even if we are going to get past this point. What is the cycle, the end time cycle? Is that God is bringing the church to a place where we're going to see the fullness of character and maturity of the bride. We cannot carry on like we've been carrying on. Like little babies. They have to change diapers the whole time. If you don't change a baby's diapers, you sting. They sting. They smell. Jeremiah chapter 48 says, he says, some of you, he says, some of you are walking around stinking like that. Like you are constipated. Go and read it. Because we're walking around 
and they did that, they said that, and you smell. You think you don't smell. It's like a person who's, who's got a problem with, you know, with smelling under his arms. He doesn't know that. Everybody else knows that. And so the church, Jesus Christ, is calling the church in the end time cycle. And I'm going to use that terminology because this is what we've been, what we've been taught. That you need to hear the term, terminology of end time cycles because Apostle Maldonado is coming. You're going to hear that. You need to understand how this thing works. So in this cycle, God is positioning the church to come to a place of fullness, of character, and of maturity. God is not coming back for a childish church. He's coming back for a glorious bride. Glorious church. And we are about to move from being the temple of God into the dimension of being the bride of Christ. The temple, in the temple we work. The bride we receive. So in the fullness of this character and of the maturity of the bride, that is the cycle. If I had a, a whole uh, circle you'll, here, you'll see that's the beginning. It's got a point, a beginning, and there's an end. The beginning is God is going to push you. You must hear me tonight. To operate in the spirit of maturity and character, you are going to get offended in the church. You are going to get disappointed. Why? Because God needs to cut away the stuff that offends you and bitter, makes you bitter and anger so that you can become the bride. I love it when people go through challenges. And I see how they go through And I check how they work the thing. And can they handle it? And how mature are they? And how, how, how God is forming their character? And I think you're going to write that test again, my brother, my sister. Pass the thing, man. Write the thing. Get full marks. Amen. Because we are mature. Listen, listen to this. Uh, is, you know, uh, let me just stick to the notes. Let me rather stick to the notes. Let me just stick to the notes. Amen. Do people hurt you, Pastor? Yeah. Do people offend you? Yes. But you know what? I still believe in them. And I still love them. Because... That's what God wants from us. So say this with me. The fullness of character and maturity of the bride is coming to my life. Say this, Lord Jesus, test me. <laughs> uh, number two. The manifestations. Here it is. The manifestations of the sons of God. Number two is the manifestations of the sons of God. Romans chapter 8 verse number 19. So what's going to take place? The manifestations of the sons of God is about to take place. Sons. I'm talking about sonship. Not ch children, little babies. I'm talking about sons. Can handle the pressure. Can operate in the supernatural. That can move in dimensions, cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, operate in maturity and character. God is going to reveal the sons of God in this hour. Say this, I'm a son of God. Number three, this is the end time outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This will be the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit the world has ever seen. There is a promise that says he's going to pour out the former and the latter. Every revival, I've been studying revivals, and I love studying these revivals. Craig gave me an incredible um, uh, uh, brochure of all the revivals that have taken place, and it's so wonderful to see all the revivals, 60s, the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, and you study these revivals and you see how God is going to take all those revivals and he's going to pour it out all at once. We had the revival of miracles with A.A. Allen, William Branham, the prophetic. We had Smith Wigglesworth with the, with the uh, miracles. I love studying Smith Wigglesworth's um, life. That, that one portion where he wrote, uh, where the reporter wrote, that they followed the life of Smith Wigglesworth. And when he used to pray, the atmosphere would become so thick that people struggled to breathe. 
And he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check if, if this is true. And so he went and he followed Smith Wigglesworth. He said, and sure enough, when he started to pray in a room, I struggled to breathe. He says, everybody left the room. He says, eventually I crawled out of the room. I couldn't breathe. It was like I needed oxygen because of the thickness and the presence of God. The anointing, the power of God. The prophetic anointing, the healing anointing, the word of faith, the, 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 the wealth, the prosperity, uh, gospel, all these things. Everything is going to be poured out at once. So you're going to walk into a meeting. You're going to walk into the, the, this movement of the supernatural and you're going to see miracles. You're going to see wealth. You're going to see creative things. You're going to see prophecies. You're going to see the move of God. You're going to see signs and wonders and miracles. Everything poured into one move of God. I thank God we are not limited to a certain portion of revival. We're going to have a whole fruit salad of revival. Everything you want, you're going to top out, take off. It is yours. Amen. So number four is this. There is a new dimension of faith coming to the church. New dimension of faith coming to the church. You are going to need faith in this hour. And not just faith. I want to speak to you and preach to you a little bit about this faith that I'm talking about. Our faith is like no other faith. I'm talking about Christianity. And I want to preach for you and to you and to all the people on, on, on television for a couple of minutes, for about 10, 15 minutes. And I want you to get into this. If you believe you are a Christian, I want you to go with me in this. Because I'm going to come against some religious mindsets and spirits that's holding the church of Jesus Christ in bondage. Faith, our faith, is like no others. Our faith is transformational. Our faith is the faith that causes us to walk on water, to raise the dead, to heal the sick, cast out devils. We have a faith that... Our God walked on the water. He can open the blind eyes. He raised the dead. Our faith can shut the lion's mouths. Our faith can kill Goliaths. That's our faith I'm talking about. Our faith can see the impossibilities. Believe for the impossibilities. In this hour, we need to be the light in this nation of South Africa. It is dark out there. There are oppositions out there. But the light must come forth. There are dark morals. Dark characters. The LGBs are standing up opposing the church. Atheists are coming against the church. The homosexuals and the lesbians and all these guys are coming against the move of the Holy Ghost. I need some Christians that can stand up and say, I believe. In the word of the Lord, I believe in the supernatural. We serve a God of the supernatural. Our faith. Somebody shout our faith. I am not going to back down for Christianity. Christianity is still the fastest growing religion in the world. We will still see the dead raised, the blind eyes open, the cripples walk. We still see the impossibilities coming. Come on, our faith. When light comes, darkness must move. Somebody shout hallelujah here tonight. So in the midst of darkness. Woo. In the midst of darkness. In the midst of opposition. In the midst and in the faces of critics. I want to say tonight to all of you who are watching it. That I still believe that Jesus heals. I still believe Jesus delivers. I still believe He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I still believe He is able to do the impossible. Come on, South Africa. I still believe He is coming back for a glorious church. How many of you believe it? Come on. So who are we? We are the light of the world. City on a hill. Cannot be hidden anymore. Darkness may come, but in the darkness the light arises. Our faith.
Say my faith. Shout at my faith. Will darkness overcome light? Always when there's light and darkness, light always wins. So we are the light of the world. We are the people of light. In His presence we shine. We are the salt of the earth. Light of the world. Disciples of Christ. I am a product of the upper room. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. People say don't pray in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is not for today. All of you say the Holy Spirit is not for today. This is for you. We still believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on, how many people are filled with the Holy Ghost that can pray in the Holy Ghost? Hey! I am forgiven. I am free. I am favored of the Lord. I'm a product of the upper room. I'm a warrior. I'm a world changer. We are the bride of Christ. Yay, hey, come on. Yeah. We are the church of Jesus Christ. We are not that broke little thing sitting in the back. They call us spineless Christians. Weak people that believe in something that doesn't even exist. Our God is still the same. He created the world with one word. Spoke one word and the whole world existed. Don't come with your theory of Big Bang and the Big Bang Theory. No, it is Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Woo! Somebody shout, we are the church. I dare you to say, I'm proud to be a Christian. Not all of you said that. So those of you who didn't say nothing, I want to tell you, I am not ashamed to be called a Christian, child of God, son of the Most High God. We are the church, the church, the bride of Christ. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Our faith. Woo. That's why we need the restoration of the glory of God. Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. Not a defeated church. Not a divided church. But a glorious church. And that's why, like I said, we need the restoration of the glory of God. There's a lot of end time spirits. A lot of end time spirits happening at the moment. We have the spirit of Jezebel. Just we have the spirit of Absalom. The spirit of Lucifer. We have Herod's spirit. We have a... F- uh, Nebuchadnezzar spirit. All these spirits are operating. Pharaoh spirit. What is this, the spirit of Pharaoh? It keeps people in debt and keep you in bondage. You never come out of debt. You'll always be a slave to the system. There is the Jezebel spirit. That keeps men of God, women of God, Christians in caves. And keep them bound by sexual perversions. In this end time, you'll see the spirit of Jezebel arising. I think three, four weeks ago I preached to you about this spirit. Our only weapon is to perverse, to bring sexual perversion. In this end time, move of God. And they go, she's going to try everything to take you out of your call and let you fall sexually. We have an Absalom spirit. Dividing churches. Dividing homes. 
that you sit there with offense against your brother, you've got an Absalom spirit. I cannot let Absalom spirits hang around me because you're going to kill me. You're going to turn against your own dad like Absalom. Went after his own dad. Cannot cause division. We will not tolerate the spirit of Absalom, spirit of Jezebel, spirit of Pharaoh, the spirit of Herod that kills little children, abortion, does human trafficking. But there is a spirit that is more powerful than Jezebel, that is more powerful than Absalom, it's more powerful than Lucifer. It's more powerful than Herod. It's more powerful than Nebuchadnezzar's spirit. It is called the Spirit of God. It is the Holy Spirit. The most powerful spirit on the planet. How many of you have that spirit? Greater is He than he that's in the world. I want to say tonight to you, for every Pharaoh, they must rise up a Moses. For every Goliath, they must be a David. For every Nebuchadnezzar, they must be a Daniel. For every Jezebel, there needs to be an Elijah. For every Herod, there needs to be a Jesus. And for every devil, there needs to be a child of the living God. That section there, stand up. Stand under that gallery. Come on. Come on, come on. Where's the Christians in this house? Where's the Christians in the house? Shut I'm a Christian. To hell with the devil. We're taking back our families. We're taking back victory. I'm taking back the glory of God. Yay. 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 I feel the glory of God. I feel the presence of God. The devil is running out of this place tonight. Come on, let's restore the glory. Restore the presence. Restore the anointing of God upon your life. They said to me, there you cannot sit down. They said, you cannot say Jesus is the only way. It's freedom of speech and it's hate speech and hate crime in our nation. And they said, you're not allowed to say Jesus is the only way because you offend other religions. People threat, give threats when you say that. They put little bombs on your emojis. <laughs> Blow you up, don't say that. They get mad. Upset. Remove your status that says Jesus. Remove the stuff that says about Jesus. You can't, cannot say the name of Jesus too much. All religions leads to God. But I want to say tonight, there is not come, five ways to heaven. There are not four ways to heaven. There are not three ways to heaven. There are not two ways to heaven. There is only one way. Come on. His name is. His name is Jesus. The Son of God. The one and only Son of God. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, it's good. You know, I enjoy these moments with you. Although you may feel that, but you can't see me. Listen, listen, I can feel your spirit. We don't know one another after the flesh, but after the spirit. So I can pick up what you're going through. I, I sense it very strongly and it feels like I'm right there in your home. So thank you for allowing me to be in your home and spending this time with you. Remember this. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for being a partner with me. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for all the financial support to take this program around the world. Thank you and may God bless you. So remember, we love you. 
We pray for you. And I hope to meet you someday. If you're in the Johannesburg area, come and greet me here at our church, at New Beginning Scripture Family Church. If you are looking for a church, you can just go on the website. We have a couple of NBCFC churches, and I know that they will make you feel welcome and at home. So have a great weekend. We love you. This is Nikki van der Westhuizen. Remember to host the supernatural.